In this science video, we're going to talk about forces. So what a force is, for our purposes, we can use a very simple definition here. A force is any push or pull on an object. So just as you would imagine that, if an object is being pushed by either a human or uh, it could be a machine, a simple machine maybe, really, really anything that's a push or pull on an object, we're going to count that as a force. All right, so a couple things about forces. Uh, forces, we need to indicate both a size and a direction for the force. All right, so uh, we need to say this force is 10 units. Uh, the units that we're going to use are called the newtons. All right, the, the units for, oops, sorry, <laughs> that units got kind of messed up there. The units for forces are newtons. All right, so it has a size. So we would say maybe a force is 5 newtons or 100 newtons. That tells us how big the force is but also a direction. So we want to know is the force acting to the left, to the right, up, down, or we can maybe give absolute directions like north, south, east, or west. But we need to include with the force both the size and the direction because uh, that the direction matters whether we're pushing it one way or the other. All right, so let's think about these. If, if we're trying to draw all the forces acting on this box here, uh, there's more than just the guy pushing on it. So if you want to maybe pause the video uh, right now and think about what other forces might be acting on this box, what else might be pushing or pulling on it, in this case, as he pushes it across the floor. All right, so the, the other forces acting on this box, we could draw what's called a free body diagram or a force diagram of all the forces on this box. So if we kind of draw a dot in the middle here, we can draw all the forces that are acting on the box. So obviously we've got this guy here, he's pushing to the right on the box, so we could draw one force going this way, and this would be the force from the guy on the box. Other forces acting on the box. We would have the box not just floating in the air, right? It's sitting on the ground, so if something is pushing it downwards, keeping it on the ground, otherwise it'd be a lot easier to push, or the guy could just pick it up and carry it really easily, right? So that force is gravity. So we have a downwards force here, that's gravity that's keeping this box sound on the ground. All right, so we have the force from the guy. We have gravity pushing downwards. What other forces do we have here? Well, if gravity is pushing downwards and the box isn't just moving downwards, we know something has to be pushing it up, keeping it from moving downwards through the floor, right? So the floor is going to push upwards on the box as well. So we'd have a force here from the floor. And as the guy pushes across the floor, we kind of got to think here, it, it's not that easy to, to push across the floor. Something is kind of holding it back. So this is a force called friction. So we'll talk about friction a little more in future videos, but friction is a force that opposes motion. So as the guy tries to push across the floor, it's going to be hard to do because friction between the box and the floor is going to make it a little more difficult for him to push that across. So there are four major forces that are acting on this box as the guy pushes it across the floor. So again, these are any push or pull on an object. So the guy is pushing across the floor, gravity is pulling down on the box, the floor is pushing back up on the box, and friction is opposing the motion as the guy pushes across to the right there. So if we think about here, How do we combine forces? If we have a situation like that when we have multiple forces, how do we combine those forces and see what our total force might be if we have a bunch of forces added together there? So when we're combining forces, there's a couple ways we want to think about how to combine those. If two forces are acting in the same direction, they're going to help each other. So to find the net force or the total force, we have to combine the forces by adding them. All right, so if we have one force going to the right and another force going to the right, and let's say this force is 10 newtons and this force is 50 newtons, then our net force here would be 60 newtons to the right. Because these forces are going in the same direction, we have to add them to get the net force. So we add those and we would get a net force of 60 newtons here. All right, so forces that are going in the same direction, in order to find the total, the net force, we have to add those forces together. All right, so then what if we have forces that are going in opposite directions? In order to find the net force in that case, forces going in opposite directions, they're going to oppose each other. We must subtract those forces. So if forces are going in the same direction, we add them. If they're going in opposite directions, we subtract them. 
So to find the net force here, if we have, let's say, a force going to the right that's 50 newtons, and we have a force going to the left that's maybe 20 newtons, in this case, we have to subtract the forces. So the net force here is going to be 30 newtons. All right, so how do we know which direction the net force is going to be in this case? Well, the easiest way to do this is to just see which force is bigger. All right, so the bigger force is always going to win out. So in this case, the 50 newton force is bigger than the 20 newton force. So the net force is going to be to the right. So if we look at a couple of examples here of combining forces, this kind of illustrates what we just talked about, right? So in this case, we have forces that are going in opposite directions. We have 100 newtons going to the right and 150 newtons going to the left. So to combine those forces, we have to subtract them. So we subtract 100 from 150, we would end up with 50 newtons for the force. In this case over here, we have two forces going in the same direction. So two forces going in the same direction, we must add them. And in this case, 100 and 150 would give us 250 newtons for the net force. So opposite direction, we subtract. Same direction, we add. So uh, here are a couple of examples. If you want to pause the video and try these out on your own, find the net force in each of these cases. All right, so to find the net force here, these are going in opposite directions. This example on the left here, we have, we have forces going in opposite directions. So in that case, we need to subtract them. So when we subtract these forces, we get a net force of 400 newtons. And how do we decide what direction that net force is going to be? Well, we got to see what the bigger force is. The bigger force is going to win out. That would be 1,200 newtons, so the net force here would be going upwards. The second example here, we have 600 and 800 newtons. Again, these forces are in opposite directions, so we must subtract them. That would give us a net force of 200 newtons. How do we decide which direction? Again, the bigger force wins out. In this case, gravity is the bigger force, so we're going to have a net force going downwards of 200 newtons. This third example here was a little tricky. We can only add forces that are in the same plane, so the same direction. So here we have a, kind of a y plane here and an x plane here. We think of this kind of almost like an axis system. All right, so to combine these forces, we can only combine the ones that are in the same plane. So here we have 50 newtons going up, 50 newtons going down. The net force when we combine those is going to be 0 newtons because we subtract them and 50 minus 50 would give us 0. So what's left here is zero newtons in the vertical direction. And then we still have this 20 hanging out here going to the left. All right, so the net force here, we have nothing counteracting this 20 on the right side here. This is all just empty here. So the net force here is going to be 20 newtons to the left. So we've canceled out these 50s essentially because one's going up and one's going down. They end up with zero newtons in the vertical direction. So then the only force left is going to the left at 20 newtons. So the net force here would then be 20 newtons. Okay, so the last thing we need to talk about in terms of uh, combining forces here is balanced and unbalanced forces. All right, so what we mean by that is that forces are balanced if they add up to zero. So in this case, uh, in, in the example we just gave where we had the box and 50 newtons going up and 50 newtons going down, in that case, the forces in the vertical direction only were balanced because they added up to zero newtons. So if this is all we had, then, then we would end up with a net force of zero newtons. This would be a balanced set of forces. All right? But as soon as we add in this 20 newton force going to the left, then in this case, the forces are no longer balanced because the forces must add up to zero in all directions. So in this case, we had forces that added up to zero in the vertical direction, but not in the horizontal direction. Therefore, the forces are not balanced overall because we have some, un, uh, some imbalance here on the left side of the box here. All right. So what do we need to know about balanced forces? Well, they do not cause motion. So if you have balanced forces acting on an object, if we think about maybe just a box sitting on the floor, we have gravity pushing down, we have the floor pushing up, Balanced forces do not cause motion. So that's why a box just sits still on the floor is because the forces are balanced, so it's not going to move. All right? Unbalanced forces, how do we get those? We have unbalanced forces if the forces add up to anything other than zero. And this can be, again, in any direction. So in this case over here, 
if we look at this again, we have <laughs> that circle did not go well. We have a 20 newton force here that's causing an, um, an, an imbalance in, in the forces acting on the box. So these, these forces would technically be unbalanced. Unbalanced forces cause changes in motion. So if, a, if an object is moving and there's an unbalanced force on it, it might change its motion, it might change direction, it might slow down, it might speed up, depending on how those forces are acting. And we'll talk about that again in a future video. So if we have a box that's standing still and there's unbalanced forces on it, those are gonna cause the box to start moving, right? So balanced forces add up to zero and don't cause motion. Unbalanced forces add up to anything other than zero and do cause changes in motion. All right, thanks for watching this video on forces and I'll see you in the next one.